Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. Happy Happy Sunday. Amen. Good to see you as always. May we humble ourselves in a moment of silence as we gather our hearts or minds into the presence of God. Dear Lord, we humble ourselves before you and say thank you so much for giving us another day to gather together in fellowship. Lord, it is taken your power and strength to bring us together as a family. And we know that, Lord, you have good plans for each and every person here, those in person and those who are online. And we ask that your presence may go together with us as we sing, glorify your name, hear the scripture, fellowship with one another, and testify and hear of your goodness. Be our guide and may your presence be with each and every person in our hearts and our minds. We surrender to you all our will and ourselves, asking that God may give us a good time for fellowship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The processional hymn, Good Christians All Rejoice, hymnal 205, hymnal 205. Sing now. 
Amen. On page 351, penitential order right to. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. God is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus saying, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. My brothers and sisters, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We may sit or kneel. On page 352, let us say that prayer of confession together. Most merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways and glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. the second Sunday of Easter. Our collect for the day is on Book of Common Prayer, page 224. It's also in our bulletin insert. I'll ask us to share together the contemporary version. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture readings.
The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. But no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had any need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 133. Reading responsively. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron. And runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon. That falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing. Life for everyone. The second reading is a reading from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it and declared to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The sequence hymn, Jesus Lives, Thy Terrors Now, hymn 194, hymn 194. Jesus lives by this. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he shone them in his hands and signed. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus say to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my sign. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah is our song, and we shout together saying that the Lord, you are risen and risen indeed. We put ourselves and in humility into your presence, Lord, asking that you may speak to us in a way that we can all understand and leave this place ministered to in our hearts, our minds, our situations, and our entire lives. We pray for every family represented here. Lord, we know you have a word for each one of us and everyone gathered here in person and online. We ask that your presence may be together with us and continue helping us to be revealed of those things that we can apply and put forth in our lives as we hear them. And may the words of our mouths, meditations of our hearts be pleasing unto you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Last Sunday, we had a very wonderful service here, infant baptism, and we welcomed to the big family two infants 
who are part now and part of this fellowship, and we all shouted together that Christ is risen and risen indeed. So this was our phrase. We said, Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We say, Christ is, the Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Can we say those once again? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now all we need to is to raise the voice because the team here, I think it's this sign that won that day. We had a competition, this sign, this and this one. So let's hear who is who today. <laughs> Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now we tie, but we'll know who is the winner. <laughs> Amen. What does it mean to know and believe in the, Christian, uh, the risen Christ? What does it mean in your life? How do you perceive this message of resurrection? We say that the story has been told so many years. We've heard it several times. It doesn't change, but our lives and our situations do change. You may have started hearing this story when you were young, a Sunday school kid. And every time you go through the stations of the cross, every time you see people carrying the cross, every time this Palm Sunday, every time we talk of Christ is risen and risen indeed. But at such a time as this, how does this message come to you in a new way? We together agreed that Jesus Christ demonstrates his power over sin, evil, and death. And we've been talking around these things, around these things, and saying that through Christ's resurrection, we have the power to overcome sin. We have the power to overcome any evil that comes our way. We have the power to overcome even death because he who is God's son has overcome death itself. Therefore, it has no voice, no power over us. And as believers, Christians, faithful followers of Jesus Christ, through, uh, through him we are able to access the Father. We say that there are three things that reminds us of this story of resurrection that we can apply in our lives today. One of them being that when Jesus Christ conquered sin, evil, and death, and he stayed there, we say that that was not resuscitation. It's not trying to bring someone back to life after they die or they gone for three or four seconds or minutes. This is resurrection. There's a difference between resuscitation and resurrection. That Jesus Christ, having stayed down there in the grave for three days, he comes back to life. That can only happen when there's some greater power that is involved. And this is where we see the demonstration of God's power. And for him to come and accomplish that which he was sent to do, he had reached a point and said that, I cannot bear this. This pain is too much. I cannot go further, let your will be done. My body is so we cannot go through this, but let your will be done. And then when he reached that point, he remembered the vision and the mission that God himself, our Father, had for him to come and reconcile the world back to him. He remembered that he sent here on a mission, and that is what he came to accomplish. And Jesus Christ lived for that life until to the very end, and he did what he was sent to do as the only son of God. We therefore say that from that which Jesus did, we can borrow something and say that our lives are on a mission. Every person who is here has a mission here or not. And there's a reason why you and I are alive. And we define that mission or vision, or whatever the, the, the reason or significance that why you are alive, into one word, purpose. We say that every person has a purpose in their life. There's a reason why you're alive and there's something God wants you to achieve before you leave this world. And therefore, through his death, we say that the purpose in life is remembering that your life and my life begins with God and ends with who? With God. So Jesus Christ is the perfect example of an accomplished mission after a life of purpose. Through his death and resurrection, he conquered and he will soon he be remembering the story of how he ascended and he sends us a helper. That we realize that he lives a life of purpose and therefore we can emulate him as our example and ask ourselves this question, what is your life purpose? The day you realize your purpose in life, you'll stop being distracted. The day you realize your purpose, you'll not go to, you not change your mind when it comes to dying on the cross. You remember that I have one who conquered for my life and therefore that which he did is enough for me. I can accomplish that which I was created and made for into this world. 
life with a purpose begins and ends in Christ. I don't know what your purpose is in life. I don't know what your mission is on earth. I don't know what you feel and get to understand about yourself. Do you see yourself different and doing things different from others? Or you live a life of emulation and trying to copy what others are doing? You are an original you. I believe there's no other person like me. I believe there's no other person that shall come in this world unless the Father will so. There's a reason as to why I behave the way I do and I do things the way and I reason and I, I'm just myself. And that which God sent me here into this world for, I'll live to accomplish. My life is full of purpose. Since the time I realized my purpose in life, I stopped being distracted. I stopped knowing, uh, being swayed here and there, and I know where I'm headed from where I'm coming from and where I am. Life of purpose. Jesus Christ knew that even after 40 days in the wilderness, he will not give in to the evil one, to the power of the evil one. He still has a purpose. When he stone, changed this, bread into, uh, this stone into bread, he says, no, that's not the reason why I came. That my purpose is much bigger. There's a reason, a mission that is of a greater calling than that. When he's told that to throw yourself from there and I'll give you all this, he knows, no, I did not come for that. When Jesus is beaten and betrayed, he knows that I did not come to give up. I have to endure all that to the very end. How about you and I? We can endure to the very end. Even when life throws stones at us, we can take these stones and build ourselves some empires and some good structures that will be solid and enter. What do you do and how do you behave when things come your way that you don't understand? There's nothing you and I will go through in this life that Jesus Christ did not go through. He went through a lot, but he still conquered to the very So let Jesus, this resurrection, be a perfect example of how your life can be. A life of meaning and significance the way that you can overcome any situation that comes to you. Be it sickness, it has no power over you. Because you know that if it is the will of the Father that will go through this, I'll lift up my hand and say, Father, my desire is not to go through this, but your will, let it be done over my life. You'll have peace. For the sake of your peace, for the sake of your happiness, you'll be able to remember that and be guided. The next thing is the power of God that we see in Christ Jesus. Through his resurrection, we see the power in him over death and evil and sin. By his stripes, you are healed, you and I are healed. We believe, I believe personally that even I, when I fall sick, I have to go through that sickness. And to me, I take it as a test so that I emerge from that as a te- with a testimony. That at the end of it all, I will testify that I was once down, but by the strength that comes from God, I was able to come out of that situation and overcome that for the glory and honor of God. Have you ever felt powerless? Have you ever felt that you need, uh, you don't have the, you're just weak and you need something to strengthen or someone to strengthen you? Have you ever held, felt hungry and thirsty? And how do you solve that? When you are hungry, you go for something to eat, right? When you are thirsty, you go for something to drink to quench your thirst. But in this case, what do you do when you feel your spiritual life is so dry? you at the verge of giving up. You, you are you in a in a very decent room and house, you have a very comfortable bed, but you cannot find sleep. Remember the power of Jesus Christ, the power of God through his son Jesus in how he overcame death. There's no situation in your life that is too hard. There's no point of giving up. Know your role and what God has called you to do and do that. Ask him and pray every day. God, show me my reason for existence. And may I be plugged into your power. Your purpose cannot be accomplished unless you're plugged into that socket, source of power, which is Jesus Christ himself. We say that we gave examples of the gadgets in our kitchen. We said we have microwave, stove, fridge, and all that. If you want to understand really what I mean, go try to unplug all those gadgets from your kitchen and then live there for a week. You have them, but they're not helping you. That's how our lives are. God brought us into this world. Yes, we have the reason to exist and to live for the glory of God. But unless we remain plugged to the real source of power, our life will be in. We will not be able to to achieve that which God has called us to do. And therefore, the same way for us to be served by those gadgets that we use. Your phone. If your phone runs out of charge, you have to plug it to the source of power. You know that you recharge it. Where do you plug yourself in in order to continue living your life and overcoming situations? It's not easy, my brothers and sisters. 
Therefore, the only source of power that we can recharge ourselves, be active again, be rejuvenated, be empowered, be encouraged to continue, is in the power of Christ through his resurrection. Plug yourself into the power of resurrection, into that mystery of Jesus Christ of a coming death, and therefore you will know that even in the midst of circumstances, I still have peace of mind. Even in the midst of it all, my tears are coming down my cheeks, but I'm still having the joy of the Lord, knowing that trouble will last just for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Brothers and sisters, resurrection reminds us of the price that Jesus Christ meant for us. He traded our worries, our stress, our depression, our sickness, our burdens, all of them, they were crucified with him on the cross. There's nothing that you and I hold that Jesus Christ did not, wasn't crucified with on the cross. And he proved his power and the victory over that by him resurrecting from the dead. Paul in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says that he's, he feels like a dead man walking. And I feel sometimes that way, like I'm dead, though I'm walking, I'm dead. Why? Because everything I am has been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. He who strengthens me lives with me. And therefore, in a situation I find myself, however hard it is, I remember that I have a purpose in this life. I have to be plugged into the power of Jesus Christ through his resurrection. And I remember the price he traded me. Price payment means that all my bills are paid. It means that I'm walking into the store to grab anything I want and take me home, take, take home with me because everything has been made for. But not everything in that store that I need because some of this is junk. I can't take the fact that the store is paid, you can go and pick everything and bring it to your house. It's too small for that. That's how life works. In the same way in this life, I don't have to grab everything just because I have the joy and the privilege of God. God wants me to live my life in moderation. He paid the price for those things that are, we cannot, are so valuable to us that we cannot buy. Jesus Christ paid the price for your peace. He paid the price for your pain. He paid the price for your stress. He's paying the price for your sickness. There's no, even that condition, if you're here and you're going through a sick condition, kind of a condition you feel is too much for you, you're not alone. Jesus Christ through his power is telling you, relax. This is going nowhere. I allowed this to come your way so that you may remember of my power and presence. That's like what Paul says, a thorn in my flesh. God allows us to go through situations, not because he hates us. He loves us so much, but we'll keep our eyes focused on him. In today's scriptures, we see a very mysterious thing of the disciples getting worried. Is it true that our Savior is risen? You know, one thing you need to know, the disciples were doubters. Them, some of them doubted Jesus, even to the very end. They did not believe that he, someone could die and rise again. And therefore, Jesus reappears to them. And as we heard from the scripture, Actually, Thomas the twin says that unless I see with my eyes, unless I hear him speak and recognize his voice, unless I put my fingers in there where the nails were nailed, all that, I cannot believe. And Jesus Christ appears to them after conquering the victory, meaning that he's bringing victory to them. He's saying that peace be with you. I'm here to remind us that Jesus Christ is saying the same ones today, peace be with you. If you read that gospel, it says, peace be with you several times. Do you need peace in your life? Are you the, are you the Thomas that is, not doubting the sto that is doubting the story of resurrection? Do you still need to feel the marks? Do you still need to see Jesus? Do you still need to hear him? There's nothing you've never heard in your life since you started hearing these stories. You've seen, you've heard, you've felt. All I can tell you is that peace be with you. We are being taken through the compass between light and darkness, that through the power of resurrection, we see God as light, and therefore he overcomes darkness for us. God is almighty and everlasting. And through the Paschal mystery, he establishes this new covenant through Jesus Christ that he wants us to enjoy in the spirit of reconciliation. He says, as my children, I have allowed you to be reborn in the fellowship of Christ's body by you, the faith that you have in me through Jesus Christ. Regardless of what we go through in life, may our faith and belief be.
be that of a follower of Christ, a true believer of Christ. There's nothing we've not seen, there's nothing we've not heard. I believe all of us have ever experienced something like death in the family. And the people who died, they have never come back. That alone should make you believe that there's power in God, that he allowed his only son to come back to life. If you've lost a loved one, they have never come back. That should, enough should be a testimony. That's, a, that's the mark that you want to feel like Thomas, that I want to really feel that Jesus Christ is resurrected. Is it true that he's resurrected, he's back to life? What other sign or symbol are you looking for? Believe that God has power over our lives, that he is resurrecting his only son, Jesus Christ, for our belief. When we shout, hallelujah, Christ is risen, we are giving our highest praise to him. But the question I have for us today is this. As the scriptures tell us of the great power that the apostles gave the testimonies of the message of resurrection, where do you draw this power from? Jesus Christ. Plug yourself into the power of Christ and your purpose in life will make meaning more sense to you than before. Remembering the price he paid for you, you will be bold as these apostles to share the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that you go out there looking for the cross where Jesus Christ was crucified in order to tell people, no. Go back to your life. Do you have a scar anywhere, like you've ever experienced an accident, that you, a scar that reminds you of God's goodness? I have a scar somewhere that reminds me of, of God's goodness. When I see that, I remember a situation that I was so tough for me, and that scar reminds me this God in heaven who fights for his people. He fought for me, and that's all the testimony I need to give. Just like the apostles gave the testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and grace of God was upon them. May the grace of God be upon us as we share those scars. You see this? This is Christ crucified. This means that I've seen the goodness of God and I've felt his grace work in me. You see that scar? You know where it is? Let it be a testimony. And the power of God and his grace shall be abundant in you as you do that. If you look at the confession of our sins, many times we think for us to share the story of resurrection, we have to be perfectly fine. We are very imperfect people, believing and trusting in a perfect God. And all he wants is for us to acknowledge that we are sinful. We cannot do it by ourselves. Just like your gadget, your mobile phone cannot recharge itself without you taking the action of recharging it. It cannot operate without that. We need the power of Christ to be plugged in order to be renewed and strengthened to share that testimony. If you take Christ out of your life, the scars will be meaningless. You will not be able to share with others. If you take Christ out of your life, your purpose will be of less significance. It will not make meaning. But and the power of Christ in you, remembering what he did for you, then you will acknowledge every day that I am a sinner. I don't deserve this, but God has made it possible. Like those little children who say that they only believe what they are told. If you take a young child and throw them up, well, they, they don't cry. Most of them smile and laugh. They know that you'll be there to hold them. That's what we are called to believe, that our lives tomorrow should be lived like those little children. When you take a child, throw them up, like this, they will smile at you looking for and for you to hold them back. They don't cry unless they have ever experienced something wrong. Why? They have that faith. Faith as little as that must have seen like those of little children. Let's be kids when it comes to matters of God. Let's not complicate things when it comes to things of God. I want to add into that and say that there are various ways we can share the testimonies out there, and I want you to master this. Showing forth our faith in the power of resurrection. How can you apply this in our lives? We may speak things, things, yes, but how are we going to show forth for others to see and minister? To point number one, remembering that we have a place that has been prepared for us. A place prepared for us that our lives will not end at death. There's a place for each one of us. That's what I learned from Christ. There's a place for me. I know that even if this body is gone, there's a place for me where together with those who've gone before me, I shall be able to celebrate the joy of God. As Christians, 
We need to believe that Christ rose from the dead and that way we are reassured or assured of eternal life. If we live our lives by demonstrating the hope that we have in God, the grace that we have in and love towards others, that's enough evidence of that we believe and know that we have a place in heaven for us. We have a place in God's kingdom. Each one of us is a shareholder in God's kingdom if we believe and live in accordance to his word. We can show forth to people around us the goodness of God just by loving them, just by demonstrating the grace of God, just by showing forth that to which he has done. Show them the scars. Tell them, you see this? This is God's doing. I was gone. I was dead, but I will go and bring brought me back to life. You're sharing that confidence and making that person know that there's a place. You believe that God did it for you. There's a place in heaven for you. Your life is not limited by the issues of this world. The second thing is that we can continue in the practice of prayer and worship. Corporate worship, personal prayer, Bible study, we keep saying these things. They are helping us to keep ourselves back in track. And sometimes our schedules don't allow, but all these things are meant to deepen and strengthen our relationship with God, to grow in the understanding of his love and grace. How do we do this? Sunday, those who are here, these places were full. Well, where are those people? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them and there's nothing, something good with us. No. It's very personal. It's a choice. We choose the discipline we want to follow and what to do. That which is priority to you, you will follow it. It's not that we do things because we have nothing else to do. You do what you do because you prioritize in your list of priorities. Brothers and sisters, let's keep up the faith gathering together in fellowship. And this is a very good example to others. The same people who are here on Sunday shall come back maybe next year on Easter Sunday, God willing they shall still find us here. Are you going to give up and say that, no, I can't be doing this anymore? Keep up the faith, knowing that you have a place in the presence of God to keep going and exercising your faith. The third thing is that, how do you share the message of resurrection? By sharing the message of resurrection, you give hope. You give hope, because that's the only thing you can give to people. You give hope transformation because you share your life how you've been transformed and exercise forgiveness. Forgive people as many times as you can. Just choose to forgive. Let it be your habit. Let people forgive you. Just forgive them even if they don't deserve it. You are attracting the God's uh, presence and God's grace upon your life. We can bring others to an understanding of faith in Jesus when we forgive. Loving others by showing kindness and mercy and forgiveness demonstrates the power of the resurrection to transform lives and brings to them the healing of broken relationships. Out there, there are so many broken relationships. Broken relationships don't mean two people or three people, even individuals. There are people walking, but they are in disagreement among us themselves. Between me and myself, there is that I'm in disagreement. My mind and my heart, they are not working together because I'm, first of all, I'm not at peace with myself. And therefore, the only thing I can pass on to others is that brokenness. When we point people to the love of God, not to ourselves, God releases his grace through us and reaches to them, brings healing to them and us. Let's go out there and heal like Christ. When Christ came out of the, de of, of the grave, he went out and he appeared to the disciples. That's not something to be hindered. Go out there. Appear among us the disciples. Tell them, peace be with you. Go to conversations where people are arguing. Tell them, peace be with you. Go to families where people don't talk to each other. Tell them, peace be with you. Be the, the, Jesus, the risen Christ, the resurrected one, showing them the scars, that these are the scars of resurrection, of nailing on the cross. May you nail all your worries, stress, and fight among us to you on the cross. Tell them how your peace has come through Jesus Christ. Go there, practice this statement. Peace be with you. Among us two people, colleagues who don't agree with each other, be the peacemaker. Among us families who don't talk to each other, be the peacemaker. That's how we are sharing this message of resurrection. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
We stand together with Christians throughout the world to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. If you're there, say amen. 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 Together, we believe, believe in one God, God the, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, a world that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For a sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory and glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May we humbly sit and take a moment of silence in prayer as we gather together, asking God to bring his power of resurrection upon us, to remind us of our purpose in life, to remind us of the power that we have in Christ, and to remind us of the price he paid for us and the place he has prepared for us as we prepare to sing a song that is in your bloody insert, here I am to worship. Say that you my God, 
ourselves for the prayers of the people led by Rick. Prayers of the People, Form 3, can be found in the Red Prayer Book on page 387. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that, that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your that name, name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our bishop, presiding bishop Michael, our bishop Alan, our assistant bishop Carol, our priest in charge Zachary, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for our parish, St. Bartholomew's, and especially in its collaboration with St. Mark's, Dorchester. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the following churches. Grace Church, Newton. St. John's Church, Newtonville. St. Mary's Church, Newton Lower Falls. Uh, the parish of St. Paul, Newton Highland, and uh, for prison ministries. We pray for our president, Joseph, Vice President Kamala, our governor, Mora, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We ask your blessings for all those in our, our parish uh, prayer list, including our presiding Bishop Michael Curry, Carol Alexander, uh, Pat Berry, Richard Bridgman, Beryl Carter, Shakia Evans, Mita Fontelio, Juanita Hardrick, Barbara Harris, the Reverend Florence King, Tom and 
Pamela Logan, Jermaine Mayers, Sandra Morrell, Delphina Penniston, Austin Press Prescott, Christine Ann Walcott, Lambert Webb, Sonia Weir, and Vashtin Weir. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for St. Bartholomew's and all your saints who have entered into joy. May they also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. If you're here, do you need, just need a personal prayer? Going through a situation and you feel that you need a prayer, you can stand wherever you are and we can pray together. God who sees in secret is able to answer and give you a testimony out of love. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you know us by our names and you know what we are going through and we thank you for those who feel in their hearts, Lord, that they need you to visit them in a new way. Lord, we welcome you into their lives and into their hearts and into their minds and there are those who have very personal needs that cannot even be said or mentioned in the hearing of many. We ask that by the power of the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, you may make it possible that they experience peace that comes from you. And as you appear to the apostles and you told them, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you, told them not to regard their sins, but the faith of that which you've given them through the church and dying on the cross for it. We pray that you may give to us that peace, each one of us and those who are online, whatever they are, those who are travel, and the unity that we need, that we may work together in the fellowship of Christ who has conquered sin, evil, and death for us. And in that unity together with the power of the Holy Spirit, we will look forward to that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Let's share this peace with one another. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. We share the peace as I invite the choir to give us an amen.
the glory, great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for us sin. And open the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God. The bride is a pender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great or rejoicing through Jesus the Son. Be it purer and higher and greater will be our wonder of transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Amen. Parish announcements for April 7th. We welcome everyone worshiping with us today in person and on YouTube. If you're visiting for the first time, please reach out to the church. Those are on YouTube or the first time in person. And I do want to mention that our junior warden is watching and she is keeping a very close eye on me. <laughs> Let's welcome Dorothy, our prior organist, who is filling in for Pace today. <laughs> Collaboration Bible study session, joint with St. Bart's and St. Mark's, continues on Tuesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The homework assignment, please read the first two chapters of the Acts of the Apostles for discussion, Acts 1 and 2. We are seeking a part-time parish administrator who will work with the PIC and staff and be responsible for the day-to-day -day administration work of the church. Previous experience in that role is preferred. For further information, contact the PIC by calling the church phone at 617-354-8582. The flowers on the altar are given in the glory of God and in love and memory of George St. Ville by his wife, Cheryl St. Ville. The Absalom Jones service will be happening today 
Sunday, April 7th at 4 p.m. at St. Cyprian's Church, 1073 Tremont Street in Roxbury. Bishop Alan Gates will preside and the Reverend James Hurston will preach. All are invited to attend. We have healing service that will be happening next Sunday during the service. Upcoming activities, upcoming joint birthday celebration, Sunday, April 14th, for those born in January, February, and March. The next Zoom meeting will be happening on April 12th at 5 p.m. An email will be sent out. The third Pan-African celebration is happening on April the 27th at St. Thomas Taunton at 10 a.m. Upcoming one-year collaboration anniversary for St. Bart's and St. Mark's is happening on April the 28th. This event will be a joint event taking place at St. Mark's. We'll start at 10.30 a.m. So to, just to let everyone know that St. Bart's will be closed on that day. So we will just be having the one service at St. Mark's. Gospel concert date will be Saturday, June 8th. More information to come. Save the date, please. Dorchester Community Resource Fair is happening on May 4th at St. Mark's from 1 to 4 p.m. This is an outdoor event. Flyers will be coming in the near future. The Diocese, and, the Diocese of Massachusetts and friends and colleagues across the Episcopal Church are remembering and celebrating the life and witness of the Reverend Canon Edward W. Rodman, who died peacefully, according to his family, on April 2nd at home in Framingham. Ed Rodman was known churchwide as a strategic advocate and activist for social and racial justice. And as an educator and mentor across generations in the Episcopal Church. A memorial service is being planned for Saturday, May the 25th at 1030 at the Cathedral Church of St. Paul in Boston. On 420, a number of ministries from across the Diocese of Massachusetts are sponsoring a panel discussion titled, Generation to Generation, talking with younger adults about the next Episcopate in the Diocese of Massachusetts. More information to come on that. In order to make this event a success, we need to hear from you. If you are in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, please join us next Wednesday, April 10th, from 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. An email will be sent out with additional information. Meet and greet schedule with Bishop nominees. The Transition Committee has scheduled a series of open meetings around the diocese beginning from May 7th to the 11th giving the people of the diocese an opportunity to meet and learn more about the nominees for election as the diocese 17th bishop diocesan. All are invited to attend, particularly those who are voting members of the diocesan convention. The meet and greets will take place. There is a number of listed locations starting with Tuesday, May 7th from 7 to 8.30 at, Saint, at All Saints Parish, Ashmont in Dorchester. More information will be coming out via email. Prayer for election of a bishop. At the back of that insert, let's pray together for election of a bishop. Let us pray. Almighty God, keep of every good gift. Look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose the bishop for this diocese, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Birthday blessings. We have Mitaline and Bob who is celebrating birthdays this month. Are there any additional birthdays? And for those also on YouTube. We pray for the birthdays. Gracious God in Jesus' name. We thank you so very much because of the, your goodness and mercy upon those who are celebrating their birthdays, especially those whose names have been mentioned today, and those who are online on YouTube, and those who are in our families that we know of. We pray for them and blessing upon their lives, and we submit them to you, Lord, asking that you may watch over them as your children, as their days increase. May you bless and guide them wherever they may be. We ask and pray that you may strengthen them when they stand and raise them up when they fall. And let your peace, which passes all understanding, remain in their hearts all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Sunday school, our special praise for travel, birth, birth, travel anniversaries or any, anyone just in need of prayer and blessing. You may feel free to stand wherever you are for the child that you have any kids in our family, so may receive the blessing and prayer on their behalf. Let us pray for each one who is traveling. We pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, you may help your servant standing here asking for blessings as they travel. We pray in Jesus' name that your places may be together with them. We pray for your goodness and mercy to follow them wherever they go. And all those who travel, Lord, we thank you for those who we prayed for and they are back safely. We glorify your name because of taking care of them. We pray for all those who are on YouTube too, who are traveling from one place to another. We pray for those who will be traveling this week by road and even by other means that you may protect them and keep them from any harm, O oh Lord. And even the plans they have, Lord, may be accomplished. We pray, O oh God, that you may bless us all and be with us, that we may gather together in fellowship. We always have reasons to give thanks to you. This we pray in Jesus' name, praise him for blessing in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. We also praise you, Lord, because of the kids that are in our midst. We pray that you may continue blessing them. Father, we know that children are a gift from you, and there is nothing, Lord, that brings joy into our lives than seeing all of us healthy and members of our family happy. And we thank you, Father, for we know that, Lord, when you do this, we glorify your holy name. And you've blessed us with kids in this church. We've blessed the church, uh, this, this community, Lord, with children. We pray for your pr pr protection upon them. As they go to school, as they stay in their homes, we pray for peace in the neighborhood and safety, O oh God. That where these children are raised, with the environment where they are, and all those who work with kids in colleges too, bless them. Those who teach them, Father, may you give them patience and give them love for their future. And we pray for cooperation and good relations between the teachers and the students and all those who work with them. Pray for all the working fraternity, Lord, in this city and beyond. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for blessings as they continue growing wisdom and stature. May your presence be their kind. In the name of God, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, our senior warden. And the junior warden is watching. <laughs> As we are told. I want to take this chance to say two things. One is um, to ask kindly of those people whose birthdays are March, January, February, and March, me being one of them. There's uh, so many others. I'm leading by example. Yes, thank you very much. We have a very important meeting we want to do on Friday, 5 o'clock. An email reminder will be sent. We ask that you may come so that we may talk about something that we're hoping and planning to do. And here is the vision. We all have friends who invite us when things are not okay. Is it true? If you, if that is, you have such friends, raise up your hand. You have friends who text you or remind you. When things go wrong, they text you or tell you, things are not okay, please pray for me or please help me where you can. Do you have such friends? Raise up your hand. Okay. Do you have friends when, celebrate, when they are celebrating good things, they invite you? Raise up your hand. Amen. Do you have friends who just call you to check on how you're doing? Please raise up your hand. Uh -huh. 
people who wish you well, right? Now, we have a concept here we were trying to bring in the church. When people, and we want to enhance what we call continuous stewardship and, uh, and giving thanks. And each one of us is something we share in common. One is birthdays. So we want to you, give you an opportunity as a member of this church to be celebrate your birthday in style here in the church. The same way your life began here, we want to give you a chance to come here. If you want to tell us your testimony, if you just want to come and give thanks to God for what he has done, for the care, for the many scars in your life, we welcome you. So we've planned ourselves in, in uh, quarters. The first quarter is January, February, and March. And we've agreed that all those people who celebrate their birthdays this month, they will look into which what God has done for them. And we are going to start for something that we'll all remember with our family members. And we become the vessels of honor in that we'll invite all these friends that we know to tell them, hey, my birthday blessing is this Sunday, and I invite you to come and celebrate together with me. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm not in the hospital. I'm not, being, I'm not having any pain, but I'm just wishing you well, and you welcome you to come and stand together with me as I give thanks to God. Then as you prayerfully consider what God has done for you, we want you to think of looking up. Can everybody look up? Look up? Do you see? Some of you are looking at me. If you look at up, what do you see when you look up? What do you see? What do you see? A ceiling. How do you like that ceiling? How do you like it? Some of you come here, you don't even look up. We look signed and look at here what is going on, but I want us to look up. The Bible says in Psalm 121 that I look up to the mountains where my help comes from. And I know that when sometimes when we are down, we look up to the mountains and where our help comes from. I now want to practice that in our birthdays, we want to create a legacy. I want you to challenge yourself to create something out of that. That when you feel down and life here on earth is not saving, you look up and look unto God and see. Before you see God, I believe I see God, you see that sitting and say that we're going to make this beautiful sanctuary a good place where people can look up and feel blessed. How will you feel if your grandchild or someone came and you tell them, look up, in your fifth birthday, you painted that area. You see where the fan is and that particular part and this one. So we want to give opportunity to parishioners and friends that come that day, you come and our target is through our birthdays, we are going to paint that ceiling. To paint that ceiling, talk to God, pray about it, and call friends. If you celebrate your birthday on March, January, February, and March, you are a guest of honor. Everybody here will have a chance to be a guest of honor. You come tell us how many measurements, meters, or centimeters you want to paint and do as the Lord leads you. It's voluntary. You may choose to say no. You may choose to say yes. We shall still give thanks to God and pray. On that day, 14th, we shall come here and give our gifts, and we shall announce. I believe, well, the team I'm in, January, February, and March, we are going to take the trophy for the whole year because it's a prize for the winning team. We're going to go to get this trophy or this prize and for the winning team, and I know that you pray for and support. And because you are all my friends, you are invited. I invite you to support me. This hand of mine, when I greet you, please don't greet me empty-handed because I want to paint the whole. Those people who come with something, come greet me, and that day I will bring that blessing and we paint that ceiling. Amen? Amen. Last but not least, I want to, help to acknowledge the presence of all of us and especially our mom who is here. I just want you to stand and wave and we acknowledge you coming back. Thank you so much. We love you so much. We're glad that you're here. Welcome back. Now we've missed you and all of us. I will. Amen. Amen. This time we offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good our vows unto the Most High. The communion hymn, Jesus in the Morning, is in Lift Every Voice, number 76. Lift Every Voice, number 76. Oh, sorry. The offertory hymn, Come Ye Faithful, Rise There, and hymnal number 199, hymnal number 199.
day Christ has burst his prison And from three days sleep in death As the sun has risen All the winter all our sins Long and dark is flying From his light to whom we give Lord and praise undying Now the queen of seasons bright With the day of splendor With the royal feast of pears Comes his joy to render Comes to glad Jerusalem Who with true affection Welcomes in unwearied strain Jesus' resurrection Neither might the gates of death nor the tombstone portal, nor the watches, nor the seal, all the as a mortal. But today, amidst thine own, thou didst stand be Thy peace, which evermore has a human knowing. Praise God from whom all blessings sins flow. Praise Him, all creatures held below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Page 367. If you're there, say Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Tell us, give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord? For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophet, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Bartholomew, St. Mark's, ever blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints past, present, and those to come, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the hand of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You are welcome to take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. How we have the communion hymn. Um, it's Jesus in the morning and lift every voice number seven six. Jesus in the morning, lift every voice number seven six.
Christ and work of heaven. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him in the, the, praise him in the morning, heaven. praise Him in the noontime, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him when the sun goes down. Love Him, love Him, love Him in the morning, Love him in the noontime. Love him, love him, love him when the sun goes down. Serve him, serve him, serve him in the morning, serve him in the noontime. Serve him, serve him, serve him when the sun goes down. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down. The next communion hymn is I Need Thee Every Hour and lift every voice number 192, lift every voice number 192.
May we stand as we are able. And on page 366, post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in this holy mystery that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Before we pray, I want to say thank you to all those who contributed to the success of this service, our videographer and sound person. Thank you so much. The ushers, those who brought the gifts and oblations and offerings. Thank you so much for those who read and the choir. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Thank you, uh, Sherry and Joy. And thank you all of us, those who are online, YouTube, following this service. We love you all, and thank you for everyone for being part of this. You all complete this circle of fellowship, and whenever you are here, we thank God for your presence. Shall we appreciate the Lord together for everyone's work? Amen. May God bless us all. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we've sat at your feet, and you've fed us, and Lord, you've nourished our spirits and made us it possible Lord, for us to remember the love that you have for us through your son, Jesus Christ, whom you enabled to conquer death, sin, and evil for us. And because he is the resurrected and savior, we pray that you help us to put forth these stories in our lives. Thank you for reminding us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ that, Lord, we have to live a life of purpose, a life where, Lord, we understand the meaning as to why you brought us in this world. Lord, help us through the resurrection to know that we have power in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through his resurrection, we have conquered our life already, and there's nothing that is too hard for you to handle. Don't thank you for reminding us that, Lord, you have paid the price for all our stress, burdens, sicknesses, and worries, and anything else that comes to steal our peace. Thank you for reminding us that you have a place for us through eternal life, that our life does not end at death. But God, we remain assured of what you've taught us and reminded us. Help us to continue in our spiritual discipline of gathering together in worship and in prayer and singing. Help us, Lord, to continue meeting with one another as we share the things that you've given us. We pray, O oh God, that you may continue helping even those who are not able to make it here, that, Lord, they may glorify you in every single way. And we pray for this fellowship, asking that you may all help us, Lord, to resonate with this word and the things we've experienced in this service throughout the week and for the life to come. In Christ's name we, can, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God Almighty that surpasses all forms of human understanding continue guiding your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and fear of God and that of his love of his son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. The recessional hymn, that Easter day with joy was bright, hymn 193, hymn 193. Three. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Go in peace in the name of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm-hmm. 